Today I've got something lined up which is going to be really, really useful for people who have trouble memorizing their times table. Uh, well, it will come, will come very handy for, for everybody who's got little kids who, <laughs> who struggle with this a lot. Um, I'll start with a clip from one of my favorite teaching movies, Stand and Deliver. We've already had another clip in the Negative Times Negative video. This one is even better. You know the times tables? I know the ones, the twos, the threes. Fingerman, I heard about you. Are you the fingerman? I'm the fingerman too. You know what I can do? I know how to multiply by nine. Nine times three. One, two, three. What do you got? Twenty-seven. Six times nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. What do you got? Fifty-four. Yeah. You want a hard one? How about eight times nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Amazing. <laughs> now, quite a few people are aware of this one here, and quite a few teachers actually teach this one. Um, I mean, I taught my, my kids the nine times table like this, and you know, that still, whenever they're uncertain, they, they bring it out and <laughs> reconstruct things there. It's really quite ingenious, right? So at the moment, the eighth finger is down, and to the left of it, there's seven left over, and to the right of it, there's two left over, so it's 72. Pretty, right? Pretty. And that works for the whole uh, nine times table. So one times nine, two times nine, all the way up to 10 times nine. Uh, why does it work? Well, it's really not that hard. Um, I leave it for somebody to sort it out in the comments. Okay, so sort it out in the comments. Give you reasons why this works. Okay. Uh, now, a lot of people are aware of this. Most people wouldn't know that by doing this, you're also doing the 99 times table, the 999 times table, and so on. I'll just show you the 99 times table. The 99 times table looks like this. You know, very similar to the 9 times table. Uh, you just basically take the 9 times table and insert nines in the middle of everything you've got there and you get the 99 times table. And with the 999 times table you insert two nines and so on. Again, somebody figure out in the comments how this works. <laughs> Are they going to do it, Giuseppe? What do you think? Uh, I think they're going to do it, yeah. They, they like to, be, uh, to pitch in. Okay. <laughs> but if they do it, they get a gold star from us. Okay, they get a gold star. <laughs> Very good. To start or, or a seal of approval. All right. Now, what I want to talk about today is something that not too many people are aware of. It has been around for hundreds of years, and it's actually, actually also something that I taught my kids and which works very well. So what you do there is you associate uh, the numbers from 6 to 10 with the fingers of your left hand, but also with the fingers of your right hand, like that. And now I'm just going to go for it and show you how to, to multiply with this setup here. So what's really nice about it is it kind of takes care of all the difficult uh, products in the, in the times tables. So all the ones with, with large numbers, the ones that nobody can remember, like 6 times 7 or 7 times 8 or these sorts of things. Right? All right, let's just go for it. So we're going to do 7 times 8. 7 times 8. So we're looking on the left hand. Everything at the touching point and below, there's two fingers there. Mm -hmm. On the right side, there are three fingers there. Two fingers plus three fingers is? Five fingers. Five fingers to put on the five. Above, there's some uh, fingers left over. There's three there. And there's two on the other side. Now, those two numbers we have to multiply, not add. So three times two is? Six. Six. 56. Seven times eight is 56. Neat, huh? Neat. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> meta because to find out a multiplication, you still have to do a multiplication in your head. That's right. Two. That's right. That's right. But the multiplication is a, is an easy one, right? Ah, so it's yes. an easy one. So it's, it's, it's just three times two, and, and, and people usually mm -hmm. don't have any problem with that. Whereas with the big one, you know, people get uncertain. And, yep. you know, the, the, most of the trouble with times tables is with, with the large numbers, right? Okay, let's do another example. Here we've got six times nine. Six times nine. So here on that side, we've got one finger. Mm -hmm. On that side, we've got four fingers. One plus four is five. Right. Yeah. And then on top we've got 4 and 1. 4 times 1 is? 4. Four. So uh, 54 is 6 that times. Works. works, works. Okay, let's just do one more. One more. Kind of an extreme one, okay? We do uh, 6 times 10. Okay, now on that side we've got one finger. Here we've got 5. 1 plus 5 is 6. six. Okay, now on top it gets kind of neat. Uh, we've got 4. On the other side we've got? 0. 0. So 0 times 4 is? 0. 0. Works. 60 is? 6 times 10. And it works for all of these things. There's a slight complication when you kind of go and multiply the smaller of the numbers. So let's just go for that one. 
So here we go for, um, ah, right, six times seven. Okay, six times seven. So one plus two is three. Okay, then on top, four times three is 12. Mm. Ah, ah. yeah, but, but it's pretty obvious what you're going to do, right? Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? You just uh, carry the one. You just carry the one, exactly, and you get 42. And that works, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so let's just do another example here. So the 6 times 6 has the same problem. So 6 times 6, uh, um, we've got 1 here, we've got 1 there, that gives 2. 2. two. And then on top, we've got 4, we've got another 4. 16. That gives 16, that's right. And now we've carried a 1. Right. But before we do this, we actually kind of, for what I want to talk about next, it's kind of important to, to realize what we're really doing here. Well, we're adding, or we're just looking at the, the number of green fingers there. And so that number, we just attach a 0 basically to it. Right? Mm -hmm. That's like a 20. And we add to it the product on top. That's what we're really doing. right? And that really works for all of them. It's just, you know. OK, so you could also look at it like this. Okay? So it's 36. Perfect. 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 Now, the next thing I'm going to do is something that hasn't been done before in the history of this trick, I think. Okay, so let's just go. I'm going to go for a countdown. I'm going to do um, 7 times 8 and six, uh, 7 times 7 and 7 times 6, okay? And let's just see what happens. Okay, so again, we've already had this one. We've got five fingers down here, so that's a 50, yeah. right? So that's a 50. And on top, we've got 3 times 2. And I'm actually going to write down... 3 times 2. For, for, for what I have in mind, I, I write down things like this, okay? So let's just store this away, okay? Now we're going to go to the next one, which is 7 times 7, okay? So we've got 4 here, that means it's 40, 40. And then we've got on top 3 times 3, so 3 times 3, okay? Just take it down there. Next one is uh, 7 times 6, okay? 7 times 6. Now we've got 30, and we've got 3 times... Four, that's right, two times four. So we also note this one down. Now the question is what comes next, right? So what we've just done is we've taken this finger here, the seventh finger, and touched it to the, the eight, the seven, the six, and what comes next? That's the problem. Five, yeah. uh, five, five would come next, but we ran out of fingers, right? Really? <laughs> so, I mean, so, you know, you know that's, that's where people stop, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not necessarily where mathematicians stop, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, like, the, like, mathematics is full of these scenarios where you kind of know how something starts and then you kind of hit a natural barrier and then you either stop or you just try to keep going anyway and see where it takes you. So, for example, I could say, um, you know, square root of 2, I know what that is. I know what square root of 1 is. I know what square root of 0 is. And then I ask, what is square root of minus 1? And, you know... It doesn't make sense. So most people just say, well, we have to stop here. It doesn't make sense. But, you know, if you're, if you're a true mathematician, you just keep on going and you see what happens. And chances are you'll actually find something that's uh, amazing. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so to, the context for this finger multiplication is actually a society where, you know, they, they didn't think about, you know, anything like this. It's really just kind of basic arithmetic that they were doing there. Okay, so let's just go for it. So how do we go next? Well, I just add a five down there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a friend paint me some fives. And so... Um, so now we can do it. And now we, we'll try to do it. Right? We'll try to do it. So we've, we've established enough context here. So the green numbers, we've got 50, 40, 30. What comes next? Well, 20. 20. So let's just put it down. Let's see how that works out, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got two here. That already accounts for the full 20. On the other side, we've got no finger. Right. Perfect, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, right. so nothing, right? Then so here we've got three times two, three times three, three times four then. Five. Three times five. Let's have a look. On the left side, we've got three fingers. Three fingers. On the right side, we've five got fingers, yeah. five fingers. Works out, right? Also, 20 plus three times five is 35, 35. which is something so works, right? So we've just done something which probably nobody's done before. Amazing, right? But do we stop there? No. We, nope, no. Nope. We're true mathematicians. We're true mathematicians. We keep on going. So I've got this friend who just painted me a, a negative finger. Wow. indented. <laughs> I just put, put, put a negative figure. So let's just see how this works out. Okay, 40, 30, 20? 10. 10. All right. So let's just see how things work out. Uh, we've got 20 here. Mm -hmm. We've got a negative finger on the other side, right. which is a minus 10. So 20 minus 10 is 10. Yeah. Works out. Okay, then up on top, what comes here? 3 times 3, 3 times 4, 3 times 5? 3 times 6. 3 times 6. Let's see whether this works. Uh, so here on the left side, we've got the usual 3. On the right side, what we usually count is 
everything above the touching point, right. the numbers above the touching point, okay? And this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, we're not in the five now as an extra finger. Yeah, not as an extra finger, just as the numbers that are kind of above, or right. extra yeah. finger, whatever, right? Yeah. Whatever comes above the touching point, mm -hmm. we, we count, okay? So that works out, and what we've got here, three times six is 18, plus 10 is 28. Perfect. Perfect. But do we stop there? No. Nope. Well, obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> we just keep on going, right? As long as we have hands and markers, we'll just keep going. Okay, so um, so what we've got now is we've got things extended all the way down to minus one. Okay, but of course you could cut, keep on going, kind of do the whole body and go out here and <laughs> <laughs> forever. <laughs> but let's just say our, our three, three is our next guy, right? So we've got 30, 20, 10. Zero. Zero. Okay, let's have a look. So we've got 20 here. And now on the other side, well, we've got two of those negative guys, right. so that's minus 20. Right. So 20 minus 20 is zero, works out, right? Then we've got three times seven, that's the next one that comes up here. We've got the usual here. Above the touching point, how many have we got? Seven. Yeah. Seven, works out, right? Also three times seven is three times seven. So we're kind of losing a point here, right? <laughs> So I mean, purely in terms of saving, saving something, we're not saving anything here anymore. But we just keep on going anyway, all right? <clears throat> okay. So what comes next? Well, obviously, uh, times two times one, but let's just skip forward to times zero, which is kind of interesting, right? So we do seven times um, zero. All right, now, uh, now we should actually be able to figure out, like without actually you know, looking at anything that came before, how this is gonna work, right? So we've got two on that side, okay, two on that side. Now, how many uh, negative fingers do we have here? That's right, minus five. So, so it's two minus five is minus three, three minus, minus, minus 30. Minus and now we have to add up everything above the touching point, right? Uh, so that's three on, the, on, on that side as usual. And then on that side we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have to right. get ten, right? So it's uh, three times ten. Right, and a 30 plus three times 10 is? 30, yeah. Is? Zero. Zero, <laughs> it really works, it's just amazing, you know? Okay, uh, now what comes next? Well, now I bring in both hands, right? And now I'm actually going to do something amazing. I'm going to multiply minus one times minus one, okay? So the touching point is here at minus one, right? And actually, this is, this is a point where it kind of gets really interesting, right? It gets really interesting because at this point you can discover what minus one times minus one is or predict what, what it should be, right? And you know, probably the people who've been using this over the ages, they never thought about, you know, that, that was something that they weren't interested in. Anyway, let's do it, okay? So we're touching there. So what I have to figure out? First to figure out is how many negative fingers we have on the left. Uh, well, we've got six on the other side. Another six, obviously, right? So it's a total of 12 that corresponds to what number? 120, minus 120, okay? Now we need to figure out everything above the touching point. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And another 11 on the other side. Mm -hmm. So that's 11 times 11 is 121. 121. So yeah. we have to add 121. Ah. And what does that give? Ah. 100 minus 120 plus 121 is? One. It's one. Minus one times minus one is one. How beautiful is that? <laughs> right? And so basically at this point in time, we've made our big discovery, right? Would you and call these a fingerproof? It's a fingerproof. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fingerproof. Uh, and uh, well, do we stop there? Well, obviously, we can kind of keep on going here, right, forever, uh, but we can also do this. <laughs> okay, so now we've got a different sort of, you know, we've basically extended things all the way around, so we've got, like, all the numbers here. So we're going into the minus here, so we're going around the, the corner here, and then we go into the, you know, 11, 12, 13, that goes on forever, too. And, I mean, I kind of leave it to you now to figure out uh, how you actually do a multiplication beyond here. Right? Uh, so, for example, you know, what is 7 times 11? Right? So you have to figure that one out. And obviously there's, there's lots of things that you can explore here now. Um, you know, so algebraically how this works and, you know, if somebody's really keen, and I haven't done this myself yet, can you extend this to complex number multiplication? Ooh, probably not, but you never know. <laughs> okay.